Hello friends, this is Dr. Naveen Agrawal. I am an interventional cardiologist practicing at Valsad and Vapi district of Gujarat in India. My topic for today's discussion is regarding acidity related pain or esophageal disorders related pain and how exactly do we differentiate this sort of pain from a cardiac related or a heart attack related pain. This topic is very important because a lot of times what happens that the patient can, uh, tries to dismiss their pain and they do not take medical aid whenever they are having burning in the chest. You should be understanding the fact that burning in the chest can occur in acidity also and in a heart attack also. But if at all the patient with a heart attack dismisses their pain or burning as uh, being simple acidity, then there is very high chances that the patient will not reach the hospital in time. And uh, once the patient even uh, does a delay and if he reaches the hospital after one to two hours also, then there is very high chances that the condition of the patient will deteriorate and the very uh, there are very high chances that by the time the patient reaches the hospital, either he will be in a very bad shape and he will not be salvageable or he might die at home also. Uh, one thing you should realize that uh, in a heart attack scenario, every 30 minutes of delay in treatment can increase the chances of the patient dying by seven and a half percent so the risk is very high and it's very time dependent so it's very important for the common people to understand that whether the burning in the chest is caused by heart attack or it's caused by simple acidity because if you miss an acidity related problem there is very low chances that the patient will have a problem and uh, the worst which can happen to the patient is some GI perforation or something like that. But that is also usually not life threatening and usually does not kill the patient. But if a patient misses out on a heart attack and does not reach the hospital on time, very high chances that the patient will die in the next course of one or two hours. And even if the patient reaches the hospital and is safe, then the heart function will be so bad that the entire lifetime the patient's life will be destroyed and he will be breathless for the entire course of his lifetime. So understanding the difference between these types of pain is extremely important because almost 30 to 60 percent of the patients who develop non-cardiac chest pain, it might be related to gastroesophageal reflux disease or esophageal related disease or simple acidity related problems, which is known as dyspeptic pain. And if at all the people understand the difference between a cardiac pain and different uh, uh, GI problem related pain, then there are very high chances that they will reach the hospital in time and they will get an ECG done and uh, there are much more chances that the doctor will be able to save the life of the patient. This topic is going to be extremely useful and important for the people. So I would request you to see the topic till the end. The viewers who are new to my channel, I would request you to subscribe to my channel as this would make uh, our channel, uh, this would give us a lot of inspiration, motivation to continue the good work as we are doing now. Uh, topic, if you want to Hindi language, then my channel is available in Hindi. I will leave the link in the description box description box. We shoot this video in English language for our English speaking viewers and for our international viewers. Ke liye, ki help ke liye. Coming back to the topic, my topic is regarding differentiation of dyspeptic pain or gastroesophageal reflux related pain or acid related pain from heart related pain the biggest difference is that both the disease can cause burning in the chest but if at all the patient is having heart related pain then other cardiac symptoms are very likely to be present the patient will have extreme shortness of breath there will be a very increased amount of sweating and the sweating is not just mild that one drop of sweat is coming on the forehead usually the sweating is so severe that the patient's entire body will be getting wet and the clothes of the patient will also get wet the patient will start to feel breathless and suffocation sense will be there as someone is choking the chest or someone is holding your neck or strangulating you. This sort of suffocation will be there. There will be heaviness in the chest. Usually dyspepsia related pain will not cause heaviness in the chest and will not cause chest pain. Sometimes there is burning along with pain. So if burning is there along with pain, it is very likely to be a heart related problem because simple burning which is caused by just a dyspepsia will not cause any pain in the chest. Pain might be there but usually not that severe. Uh, besides this, the person who is having a heart attack is very likely to have other symptoms like GI disturbances, some nausea vomiting might be there, although nausea vomiting might be there in uh, acidity patient also. Then the patient is very likely to have the radiation of the pain to the left hand. The left hand of the patient will also feel numbness and tingling sensation or severe pain might be there in the left hand also. Sometimes the patient uh, might feel very dizzy and uh, the patient might collapse also, might have a syncope also. So these are the points which favor the patient is having a cardiac or a heart related pain rather than a simple acidity related pain. Usually if the patient is having acidity related pain, it is very likely that the pain will be related to food. Either the patient is having a pain related to hunger that the patient has not taken food for several hours and he started feeling burning sensation in the chest because of acidity, uh, over secretion of acid products. Or if the patient is having a very oily or spicy food the patient has taken in the last one or two hours, then there are very high chances that the patient will have a burning in the chest. 
usually acidity burning will acidity related burning will not cause any chest pain it will not cause any suffocation it will cause not cause any breathlessness the patient will not feel any dizziness the patient will not feel any uh, the patient will not collapse the sweating will not be there the radiation of the pain to the left hand will not be there neck pain will not be there it is just simple burning which is related to food and other symptoms of heart attack will not be there the problem with indian uh, patient is that most of the times whenever there is burning in the chest people tend to dismiss the pain as acid related pain and they do not go for an ecg usually the patient will reach the hospital only after they have tried over the counter medicines like eno digine and other preparations and once these medicines don't work then only the patient feels like coming to the hospital and by the time the patient reaches the hospital it's very late so it is very important for the patient that they have to realize that this burning is not just simple acid related burning it might be heart attack also it is always advisable to reach the hospital in that scenario and get an ecg done because doing a simple ecg would cost hardly 100 to 200 rupees in most of the hospitals it will save the life in a large majority of the patient because in a heart attack scenario ecg will be abnormal in at least 90 to 95 percent of the cases and majority of the cases will be picked up uh, if the patient is having a heart attack secondly some patients might have burning in the chest on walking on exertion that is usually not acidity if the patient is having exertional related burning in the chest then it is very likely that the patient is having a heart related problem right rather than a acidity related problem because the correlation of the pain with exertion or the burning in the chest with exertion is only seen in a heart problem and it is not seen in an uh, acidity related patient usually acidity might be present in the patient having uh, symptoms at rest also and symptoms are more likely th when the patient is sleeping because once we are sleeping that time the acid reflux is more and the acid content will uh, come to the mouth in acidity is very importantly that if the patient is having some reflux problem very high chances that the patient will having a will be having a bitter taste or acid content will come repeatedly into the mouth that will favor the occurrence of an acidity rather than a heart attack so these are the points which the patient can use to differentiate between a heart attack versus an acidity related pain and if the patient is having a significant doubt and especially if this patient is having a risk factor like the patient is diabetic family history of heart problems there smoking alcohol is there the patient is having a history of hypertension another heart related problem is there the patient is having a previous history of a heart attack these are the patients where the relative should be absolutely conscious and early ecg should be done in such patients uh even if the patient is very confident that this is just acidity also then also it is always advisable to better to get an ecg done because even uh, the worst thing which will happen if you reach the hospital also and it is diagnosed as an acidity then also nothing bad will happen and you will just wait ha uh, half an hour or one hour in the hospital and you can come back at home and you can continue with your activities but if you miss a how to heart attack then that will be a fatal uh, mistake and sometimes the patient might die after this and uh, the family members and the patient will always repent that they made a fatal mistake if they miss out on heart attack so whenever you are having a burning in the chest it is always advisable that you get at least an ecg done now i'll be discussing specifically gi disorders like reflux disease esophageal spasm gastric and duodenal ulcers and how is the pain different from a cardiac related pain usually in dyspepsia related pain or reflux related pain usually the patient is having a burning sensation in the chest and something gnawing or uh, something biting you inside the uh, food pipe that sensation will be there patient will be having a acidity taste i uh, say taste will be coming into the mouth uh, if the patient is lying down in a supine position or lying straight in the uh, bed that time the pain will be reversed because acid content will because of gravity effect the acid content will coming be coming more into the mouth the symptom increases with spicy food uh pain after food can also be seen in anginal pain but usually uh, that pain also increases with exertion postprandial angina is the technical term which we use when the patient is having chest pain when the patient is walking after having food because that happens because the food for uh, the uh, blood from the gi tract is diverted to the heart uh, sorry the blood from the heart is diverted to the gi tract Uh, because after the, having the food the uh, gi tract will require more amount of blood and because this extra amount of blood is diverted from the heart to the gi tract the patient starts to feel chest pain that is usually seen when the patient is walking after having a heavy food but if the patient is having a burning sensation without walking very high chances that it is simple acidity uh, usually the pain will not have any uh, the acid related pain will not have any correlation with symptoms uh, with exertion and other cardiac symptoms like ghabrad sweating uh, sense of suffocation sense of uh, chest pain 
pain radiating to the left hand sweating sensation these things will not be present in a uh, burning which is caused by acidity as compared to burning which is caused by heart pain risk factor for cardiac illness will not be there we have already discussed what are the risk factors if at all the risk factors for cardiac illness are there then the patient should always be evaluated for a heart problem and a heart attack should be ruled out uh the patient if at all he takes eno and digin usually the uh, pain of acidity will respond but the patient uh, the pain of a heart attack will not respond so if at all you take this over the counter medication and it is not responding the pain is rather worsening after taking this medicines then it is always better to get an ecg and it is always better to reach a hospital as early as possible next is the pain of esophageal spasm usually this is a dull onset tightening sort of a pain this occurs when the patient swallows a large food bolus or a big amount of food is swallowed by the patient or when the patient is taking a very hot fluid or a very cold fluid because this will trigger sudden spasm or sudden uh, contraction of the muscle of the esophageal esophagus which will cause severe pain one thing which is important that this pain responds to nitroglycerin similar to a cardiac pain because cardiac pain also responds to nitroglycerin or sorbitate tablet and the pain reduces once the patient takes this tablet similar to uh, this cardiac pain the pain of the esophageal spasm also responds to uh, nitroglycerin because this relaxes the gut muscles and uh, reduces the pain but if the uh, pain is increasing with exertion the patient is having any other cardiac symptoms or risk factors then the patient has to be evaluated for a cardiac problem usually other dyspeptic symptoms are also also there like burning in the chest acidic food uh, taste or bitter taste in the mouth these are the other gi symptoms which will there be there in a patient having esophageal spasm uh, exertional symptoms will not be there in a patient who is having a esophageal spasm related pain then there is the pain related to gastric ulcer usually the pain of gastric ulcer or ulcer in the stomach will occur uh, when the patient is having uh, ha already had the food because the gi tract will produce excess amount of acidity uh, acid amount of acid which will burn the gi mucosa and this will create pain usually this is a very dull and drilling sort of a boring sort of a pain it is non exertional pain not related with cardiac risk factors no exertional symptoms are there and uh, usually the pain is in the abdomen region rather than in the chest similarly the pain of the duodenal ulcer is slightly opposite of the pain of gastric ulcer because this pain is relieved after eating the patient uh, usually responds to antacids and uh, usually the patient is not related to any exertional risk factor or any cardiac risk factors are usually not present in such patients similarly pain of pancreatitis also is prominent in the abdominal region usually there is no chest pain some chest tenderness the abdomen tenderness also or pain while touching also might be present in the patient who having pancreatitis related pain similarly pain of biliary disease or uh, gallstone related pain that pain will be more in the hi right hypochondrial region below the chest and it will radiate to the right shoulder and cardiac pain is more likely to radiate to the left shoulder although right shoulder pain might be there in cardiac pain also so uh, pancreatitis and biliary disease also patients might be having a lot of dyspeptic dyspeptic symptoms exertional symptoms will not be there in all of these patients in this topic i have tried to discuss the common causes of gi pain Uh, in comparison to cardiac pain because a lot of times what happens that uh, the patient has is having gastric pain and usually is admitted for a cardiac pain and vice versa also that the patient is having a cardiac related pain and is admitted with a gastroenterologist for a gut related pain or a dyspepsia related pain or the worst part is that the patient does not reach the hospital also because he feels that the patient is pain is simple acidity related pain and he does not want to reach the hospital he tries to use the over the counter medicines and avoids coming to the hospital sometimes what happens that by the time the patient reaches the hospital is in such a bad condition that he uh, either deteriorates or he dies in the hospital and the doctor is not able to salvage the patient so as soon as the uh, abnormal symptom is occurring it is extremely important that you reach the hospital and get an ecg done the purpose of my channel is i wish to make scientifically correct and useful information easily available to you so you, that you can utilize this information and you can better manage your patients and you can save the lives of your patient uh if you at all you like the concept of my channel you uh, subscribe to my channel you should like the videos and you should share the link of the videos with your friends and relatives if you feel that the concept of the videos are interesting and if you have some comments and queries regarding the topics you can discuss about them in the comment section and if you have more to, uh, topics for us and more things which you feel that we should discuss in our topics then you can uh, discuss about them in the comment section and we'll be happy to uh, make more videos on these topics as well in the end this is dr navin agrawal and i am signing off thanking you a lot that you have been patient enough to listen to the whole topic and i hope that i was able to make my topic clear the people who are new to my channel i would request them to subscribe to my channel as it this would give us a lot of inspiration and motivation to continue the good work as we are doing now thank you